Yo, Joe! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another figure review or, you know, quick review on this one. I mean, we've seen the Crimson Guard before, so we pretty much know what we're getting into. But this one is on that retro card that was that is exclusive to Walmart. This is a new from the pair of retro figures. The other one being Snake Eyes, which I still need to find. I haven't had luck finding it at Walmart on the app, in store, or on Hasbro Pulso. Patiently waiting for that one. That being said, I did get two from Hasbro Pulse, and for the most part, they're in very nice condition. Uh, mine did come a bit curved from, you know, the side. It was kind of um, this, as you can see there, it's got a kind of a curve to it. I just stacked some heavy books on it and put it on the floor. And then for the most part, straightened out. But I still need to do kind of a top part of the curve there. As you can see, I did get two, so I do plan on keeping one in the box. And I think I'll be opening this one on the left over here. It tends to have more nicks at the top there as you can see but yeah i'll keep this one in its package and we're gonna open this up so here we have the back of the the retro card here uh, you can read up on them i mean it doesn't have as much information as the you know vintage one had because it's this is now in different um languages for different people so you know it's kind of of a bit of a unfortunate situation because you know they crop out a lot of the information that was in that vintage card but yeah we have them here so you can read up on that i forgot to cut out the other ones from all the other vintage figures i have to just sort of keep this but it is kind of a big file card and i don't i just don't have the space to be keeping that many you know file cards just laying around but you can see the other figures previously released which were storm shadow and zartan i have videos on them the crimson guard which we're looking at today and snake eyes which i still need to get and then here's a little gi joe.com thing i don't know if it's still if it's still you know down or if they fixed it but you can check it out and see if it's working um there's that beautiful retro card there with the crimson guard and then there's the figure itself so let me crack him open and it should be pretty easy to open these guys up from what i've seen the glue they use with these classified retro packages aren't isn't the greatest and there we go wish i would have gotten a cleaner um cut there but There's the card back, and here we have a separate tray for the back piece and the sword sheath. We do get the stand there, and then the rest of the accessories are right there. So let me get them out, and we'll take a close look at the accessories. All right, so accessories-wise, uh, we get the same thing we did with the original classified uh, Crimson Guard, except that this time we do get a stand. So yeah, here we have it, the good, nice Cobra logo on there, and it's just this very glossy black and very reflective. No name tag on the front, unfortunately, although, you know, everyone says there's a space for it. They should have just added the name. And yeah, not much at the bottom or the back, whatever. And you get two foot pegs on it. And then we pretty much have the same things, as I mentioned. Everything is painted up pretty much the same way with the silver on the blades. And then the full black, so as you can see there, very similar. Probably less shiny silver for the vintage one, although no, nope, it depends on how the line shines on it. The knife should be the same as the first classified, so there's that. Very similar, same sculpt and everything. Although this one does seem to have a glossier black on the handle compared to the first to classify, so there's a bit of difference there. Let me put this back on him. There we go, pistols are molded all in black. Uh, there's the 
original classified. Here's the new one. Same black material. Material, I can't speak. So you can see that very bit. I was gonna say it's a bit different on the handle, but I think it's just the printing that he did here. It's a bit off. Um, this classified one has like some weird gloss there, but yeah, they're the same sculpt. Let's put this back on this guy, the sword. Let's see if I can pull this out. There we go. Same sculpt. Again, the very glossy handle for the retro package one and silver paint, same equally shiny. Mine is kind of scraped up a bit, so that's a bit unfortunate, but put this back in the sheath. Put it this way. And yeah, you also get a sheath for the retro package vintage package one and same sculpt for the sheath and you can store your sword in it there you go so that's all we get i mean uh, the back piece is in full red compared to the other one nice silver logo there still for the cobra symbol just like this one but yeah, I like to see this in red. Very nice. I think this is what the vintage one um, had originally as a color. I, may, I need to check that, double check that, and then I'll put a picture up. But I think the old classic one had a red back piece. But that being said, let me gear him up and then we'll talk about articulation, which I mean, I've already done with the first classified version. So you guys can check that out, but I'll, it'll be very brief. And then we can talk about a few differences in paint application and all that stuff. So here he is all equipped. Again, the rifle is storable on the back piece with that peg there. And then you have two options for your long sword. There's a hole here for this peg on his belt and then one on the uh, backpack piece. This particular Crimson Guard will be the leader of my Crimson Guard uh, squadron. Because uh, he is a different color, and I really like <laughs> these colors. And of course, I only have one um, out of the package, so he will be my sort of leader, commander of the Crimson Guards. Um, you know, obviously following orders from Zamat and Tomax. But yeah, articulation-wise, he is pretty smooth for the most part. Um, the arms, I haven't had issues. The biceps still kind of experience that gappiness when you move it, but not so much in this one. This one is a bit harder, at least this shoulder joint in there is a bit harder. Um, the knees were a little tight, but nothing too complicated. I mean, over time, they loosen up as I move them. The boots were very sw um, smooth compared to, you know, previous Crimson Guards where they were a bit tighter bit more difficult to move up and down so I kind of like that a bit more uh, some good back and forth with the hip joints here ab crunch is pretty much the same and waist level the peg here on mine is kind of very tight um, going into the neck doesn't really rotate in there so the head is mostly rotating on the top joint and then the bottom joint of the neck there so that's a bit unfortunate. I don't know if that's the same thing. And this one just came out completely. So can't really judge that right now. But in terms of paint apps, the real difference here is that this is a Pride of Red, as you can probably see. I don't know how well my lights are gonna show that off. But yeah, he is a brighter red and i think that even the silver looks a bit more shiny as you can see there as he shines and for the most part everything is the same we get that silver v there on the buckle um the holster here for the pistol actually has a red holster with black straps whereas this one was completely black and then we still get the silver buckles on the boots there 
very nice. And of course, the main difference being the head sculpt where the vintage, not the vintage, the first classified version had a full on kind of black mask with a bit of silver here for the mouthpiece kind of thing. And then the visor in there um, with this one, we get a full silver faceplate and then the visor in there is now black which is very interesting to see, but I do like the all silver look for the crimson card. I think that looks pretty neat. Now, um, let me get another crimson guard and see if I can do a head swap because this one is removing the entire um, neck joint um, that goes in, into the neck piece. So I'll be right back with that head swap. And just to show you guys what I mean with the bottom ball joint there going into the neck, it rotates very well in there, but with this one, it, it just does not move at all, unless I need to push it in there a bit more, but I may need to heat this up because it is not moving at all. So yeah, a bit unfortunate, but here's the classic, or not classic, but first classified Crimson Guard head on the new uh, vintage repaint. And then we have the vintage helmet on the first class by body so you can see that there um yeah this would be i mean it's the same thing it's just that this is a brighter red and it does not match <laughs> the rest of the uniform there so yeah uh, definitely a head swap that maybe some people are interested in but i will keep them um with the original body here. So yeah, definitely gonna use this as the leader um, for my squadron. Um, let me know what you guys are doing with these Crimson Guards. Are you gonna buy a whole bunch of them? Do you prefer the brighter red compared to the darker red um, that we have here with the first classified? Let's see, let's see if I can stand them up. Or do you prefer this much brighter red? I like both equally, but I think the the silver on the helmet for for this new one, I, I really dig that. So those, those are my thoughts and opinions on this new Crimson Guard. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. I mean, I'll try to make it quick. Uh, with that being said, leave a like, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in a future video.